any weird like feedback or backlash from you being a black man loving cricket player. Is, <laughs> like is immediately when you walk out the airport mm -hmm. and that call like it felt like the cold is alive. You know when you it like it like it like bounds <laughs> you and it's like it's like sticking on you. And then the chip of my shoulder was gone because then you see mm, yeah, yeah, that my dad like, is now happy <laughs> for me and he's like just you know, I'm proud of you, he's encouraging. And I started yeah. experiencing like my first major injuries as well. Like, yeah. So, and obviously it's an expensive spot. Mm. Like boy, whoa. I'm sure they have a generator. And one of the kids, like they just came up to me and spat at me in my face. Wow. And then, you know, started laughing at me. Yeah. What's up, South Africa and nations worldwide? This is your boy, Teresa Motamaya, on an episode of Varumkop, here to educate all curious minds, young and old, on all topics relevant in our daily lives. And today here with me is our former cricket player, our current sports scientist, Tumi Masikela, and we will be discussing sports science with him. So, Dumi, thank you for having us on the show. Ah, no, thanks for having me, Teresa. Ah, no, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. With me here also is Tepo that from there. So, yes, sir. just drop a follow, guys. D drop a like, share, comment, subscribe, do what you have to do, show some support, let's grow some love. Yeah. You understand? Let's grow our family and spread some education. So, yeah, let's get to it. So, Dumi, I read right. that you're from Sisheho, Limpopo. Yes, 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 so, I am. Um, how long have you been living there? Well, I've well, uh, born and bred in Sisho. Um, okay. yeah, I lived there for the first 18 years of my life before oh, I matriculated and uh, okay. moved out to Pretoria. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, um, humble beginnings in uh, well, oh. yeah, well, South Africa, Limpopo. And uh, yeah, had to move to Pretoria so that uh, I can study sports science. Oh. Uh, actually, I wanted to be <laughs> an accountant yeah. or a doctor. That's what my dad would have had me be. So that but, was your first passion? Uh, I wouldn't say passion. Uh, my sister, she is a doctor. Uh, oh, I've got quite okay. a few doctors in my family. Mm -hmm. So, and my dad, he's just, he's an educator. Okay. Uh, so when I so, decided, cause I wanted to be a cricketer, well, which I was. Okay. Uh, so I knew that, okay, going into uh, medicine or something, that was not gonna happen. I needed enough or something I can study where I can okay. still train. Uh, to mm. be a professional athlete, which mm. I remember I said with my sister, and she's like, ah, let's go through the stuff. And we saw sports science, and we're like, okay, well, I'm doing sport, I like sport. It needs English, Afrikaans, I'm doing them well. So I was like, okay, this okay. is the one. So before we started, the, before the camera started rolling and we began the conversation, you mentioned mm. that in South Africa, we always have to find like unique ways of doing things, or yeah. unique ways of like penetrating into the industry. Mm -hmm. Would you say your way? into finding yourself into sports science kind of alludes to that, it speaks to that certain attribute or deep work that you have as a person. Yeah, but I d it didn't, it wasn't like a, 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 I didn't think of it like that when I chose sports science. It's just that at the time, it was like a, to have a secure uh, job, so as, you know, you become a doctor. So you become a, the best option for you at the time. Yeah, at the time. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, that's that's like secure. You be a doctor mm -hmm. or an accountant, actually, I was like, yeah, I was quite keen on accountant, mm -hmm. uh, being an accountant. Uh, but then I looked at the hours and I was like, just, uh, if I have to be an accountant, my cricket career, my sports will yeah, take a lot. Sports is my first stop. Cricket yeah. is my, uh, they, that's where I was just like, oh no, this is, this mm -hmm. is me right here. I want to be a professional athlete. So, so. Okay, so how old were you when you when you realized that cricket was the sport that you were built for? Uh, probably just um, I started taking really interest in it. Maybe I was age of sixteen. Mm -hmm. When about yeah, when I was sixteen years old, I thought that okay, well, this is um, you know I like the sport, and mm -hmm. um, my dad, my dad watches uh, he watched a lot of cricket, so. Mm -hmm. I just got a love for it. I enjoyed it. I played it. I did well at it. And then I was like, oh, okay, well, um, this might be something that I can do yeah. as a profession. Even though I wasn't sure how I was going to get there, yeah. but I knew that, no, this is, this is it. I mean, even how I knew that, okay, um, I'm definitely all in my dad. Uh, when I had to uh, apply for, for school, he wanted me to be a doctor. He's like, no, bruh, you're going to apply to be a doctor. He actually took me to Medusa to apply my my uncle. Uh, he was at Mugunsa studying at the time. Yeah. 
So my dad's like, no, one of the mornings he wakes me up, he's like, Ibrah, you're going to go apply there. And I'm just like, no, I'm not going to apply. And yeah, we drove, he drove me the whole way there from the Mpopo. That must All have the, been the worst car trip of your life. Yay! Yeah, yeah <laughs> man, like we're just sitting there and I'm just like, this dude, like, like he's no. forcing the. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I know he just wanted the best for me. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, he drove me there. I got there. And I remember um, then we, uh, my uncle, he's like, you know, okay, uh, he'll get me set up and everything to apply. I went there, they put me in the lines. And I didn't apply. I was just like, no. Did you say good This is, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was just like, that's why I made my mind. Like, yeah. No, cricket, this is, this is me. Okay. And I, on cricket specifically, like, I think the touch points you mentioned in that, even that you were going to go to the group, so that is in Soweto. Mm-hmm. So being a young man from the hood, right, both, mm. of course, this year, I went in Popo, and I also happened to go study in Soweto. Yeah. Did you find any, any weird, like, feedback or backlash from you being, a black man loving cricket, but I think mm. the general perspective is like cricket is like for white people, yeah. it has like a very mm. western energy to it. Like you yeah. see white men playing cricket and having tea afterwards. So like for you as a black man, yeah. did you find any weird feedback or just backlash from people saying like, well, funny enough, are you interested in the sport in particular? Uh, it's like strange for you. No, at the time, uh, it didn't even occur. Like, you know, what they were to say, like, uh, you blindly love something. Yeah. Like, I didn't even see. Um, any backlash or anything like because even um, sure, uh, this was actually a touching story for me. Like my parents, um, there was a game um, that took place in uh, Polokwane years ago. Uh, the Proteas actually, uh, yeah, the South Africa team. They came to play in in, in Polokwane, and uh, we went to see that game. For me, the only thing I remember on that day was um, seeing, I think it was like the Farni Divideas, like the, the old players of old. Uh, and I was just in awe, like, oh, you know, you're seeing these guys, uh, you see them on TV and now they're here, they're playing. That's all I remember of the day. Uh, and I don't remember, I just remember when the embankment, I was watching the guys playing and stuff. And that's what I remember, it was a great day. And then actually when I spoke about it to my parents, um, not so like recently, and they're telling me, they're like, no, um, actually, they didn't even stay that long. Uh, we were there and like, we were the, almost like the only black uh, yeah, family yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And um, apparently, like, uh, uh, like, they were throwing ice at us. And then we had oh, to leave. Yes. Yeah, but oh. uh, like, I don't know, just, like, somehow, like, I don't know how the brain works, but yes. I don't remember the final Yeah, detail. they said the brain always, oh, for me, yeah. the brain always, like, fixates on the positive attributes. Yeah. Of you kind of just that's, about like the negative. Yeah, that's all I remember. I remember the the memory of just it was it was such an exciting time for me. I, I for me it's a fun memory. Yeah. But then when I speak to my mom and dad, they for them different. it's it's different. Uh, they were like, you know, they had to leave the because same, yeah, it wasn't the same because they, yeah. you know, people were like throwing stuff at them, kind of saying you're not supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and eventually we left. And uh, apparently they're like, yeah, we didn't spend much time there. But for me, I just I remember I've got a clear picture of watching the game and seeing. And I was like, yeah, this is this is it. So yeah, uh, like when you say about the yeah, backlash, uh, I'd say that's one of the things when I spoke to my parents. They're like, yeah, and obviously it's an expensive sport. Mm-hmm. Like, boy, whoa, I'm sure they have a generator. Um, so, as I was saying, like, um, in terms of, uh, with, uh, backlashes or, uh, you're saying with me, uh, going to study in Soweto. Yes. Uh, luckily, well, I did not go to Medunsa, obviously, because mm-hmm. I didn't, um, study, so I did not study in, in Soweto. Um, I just made sure I didn't, I just didn't apply and then. I had to go back home. <laughs> and I know I stayed there for the evening with my uncle, didn't apply, went back home. And uh, yeah. uh, again, yeah, like it's just chats with me. Then I guess my dad understood that, okay, yeah, no, this guy is serious. And then uh, luckily there was a cricket academy um, in Limpopo. Uh, and uh, we got sponsored by, by Standard Bank, yeah, to go attend the, yeah. the, the cricket academy. So that's what I did after high school instead yeah. of going straight to study study accounting, and study accounting yeah. yeah i actually went into a cricket academy and yeah that's why i just did cricket all day mm. every day so yeah do you ever thank yourself for not taking accounting and taking cricket instead yeah definitely uh because 
like you know when they say like do what you love and never work a day in your life like uh, i find like if i did not i mean even in sports science uh, or even in cricket you mm-hmm. come across you're gonna go through stuff you don't like you don't want to do that yeah. but because you you love what you're doing you you, you kind of go through it and you get through it so mm-hmm. I'd, I'd say i really thank myself for that because uh, with accounting the more or oh, even being a doctor the, the most appealing thing is yes you know you um what can i say you've got um, security job security oh, yeah um you know the financial uh, aspects of it yeah. those are the appealing things but in terms of love i know that i i enjoy anatomy i, I like understanding how the body works yeah how everything works which is why i thought okay maybe being a doctor is something I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to do. Something you consider. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I find it very interesting still, but I don't think I could. It's not something going to 100%. Yeah. yeah. You, that's a tough job. That. Thank you. Yeah. That is understandable. So yeah. in primary, you went to Petersburg English Medium Primary School. Yeah. So that's where you start. Was that your first, is that where you started playing cricket? Like, yeah. was that the first club you joined? Because there was a Sishako cricket team. Yeah, cricket Sishako team. cricket club. Yeah. Yeah. At, so was that the first club you played for? That was the first club. Because uh, actually, funny enough, I went to at uh, PEMS, uh, Pretoria English Medium Primary School. I went to my first cricket trials there. But I wasn't like, uh, I'd seen cricket, mm-hmm. but I wasn't sure how to oh, you know, do it. Then, yeah, we had trials. And mm-hmm. when I went there, it's just, I think I was so bad. Actually, they, they, <laughs> they chased me away. They're like, no, 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 no. It's not for you. Please leave. Mm-hmm. And then um, my friends, they played for the mm-hmm. for the club in Sisho. So then I went with them. We went to training. And then, yeah, then I started there under 11s. Uh, and yeah, they, they pretty much, they developed me until the school. I actually never even went back to the school. The school actually, they're like, I don't know. Can you come, come back and home. play <laughs> and play for us <laughs> as, as the years went? I want to speak to that because you mentioned that I mean, if you do something you love, you never have to work a day in your life. Mm. But it doesn't mean that there won't be any area problems or challenges. Yeah. So even from yeah. a young age, you still experience problems. Yeah. And as you grew older, there were still challenges. Yeah. No, so it's just major. I want to speak to what is it that keeps you going back? What is mm. it that keeps giving you motivation and ultimately be, be where we are now today? Mm. What is that feeling? Can you speak more to that feeling? What it is that keeps like driving you and your motivation to, to get to where mm. you are today? I think uh, yeah, with cricket, it's actually it's a funny thing. I think like with all sportsmen, pretty much we like have a form of OCD because mm-hmm. uh, we have to do repeatedly the similar movements, mm-hmm. like repeatedly over and over and over. And Muscle so, memory. Yeah, until yeah. you you perfect it. Mm-hmm. So I think probably that's it's just my character and that uh, I like challenges. Uh, mm-hmm. For me. That's the thing, like, uh, I, I don't think I can work in an environment that's same thing every single day, you know. So at least with cricket, like, uh, there's always a new, um, something, can I say, yeah, something or a new uh, barrier to break. Yeah. So when you get really good at this, then now you're like, okay, now what's what's next? I can move on to the next one. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, exactly, yeah. you know. So that that's what I was always, I think that's what keeps me going, yeah. is that they, they, there's no ceiling. Really, like, yeah, once you get good at this thing, and then you're like, okay, now, okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. What's, and then you get good at this, and, oh, you know, what's the next thing? And I think my dad was actually quite, I say, pivotal in uh, uh, how I did in cricket. Because then, yes, I played cricket, but obviously back then training wasn't a thing. But my dad also liked marathons. And then he just decided, okay, I'm going to run a 10K uh, like on weekends, yeah, and okay. then I guess just boys being boys, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm gonna join, <laughs> you know. And then, uh, then I started running a 10k with him um, every weekend uh, yeah. when he goes and runs. And you know, once just by doing that, I guess then yeah, I'm just like thinking back now. Then all of a sudden, like um, then I'm you know, you, your cricket starts doing well. You score more runs than everyone. Yeah. You uh, bowl better than everyone, and mm-hmm. and it didn't really click then. But oh, because you. You run uh, every weekend, where else your peers don't run that much. I like that you're in competition you know. with yourself. I, I, I appreciate that. Actually. It was always yeah. about you, not about anyone else. Yeah. 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 But also, like, um, I'd say maybe a thing that also gave like a, a chip on the shoulder was um, even back then when we were younger, um, we experienced like a, with a lot of racism as well with within cricket. Because yeah. I would say it was well, more 
uh, white dominated. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one thing that really, really, especially that really sparked me to do well was um, we had a trial and uh, a group of kids, just actually there's a, um, yeah, one of the tough memories. Um, we were like, we we're just about to start training and so on. And one of the kids, like, they just came up to me and spat at me in my face. Wow. And then, you know, started laughing at me. Yeah. And I go to one of the coaches and I'm like, you know, coach, hey, this is what happened. And, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not okay. Mm. Uh, but he's like, ah, you know, I didn't see it. So, yeah, man. It's not okay. yeah like I can't. And, and these guys, they were, yeah. 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 And these guys were bigger than me, you know, like uh, they so were kind of like, they, they used to that, like they played rugby. Yeah. And they, so they big up the ones. Yeah. So, and it was three of them. I was just one, one, uh, one guy there. But also, it wasn't, it's not in my demeanor to, to fight like back. to fight back, yeah. you know? So then the way that I was just like, you know what? Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be better than all these guys. And uh, subsequently, I got to a point by the time I was 18, I was the captain. And mm -hmm. that's where, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how I was like, you know what? Um, uh, you know, that gave me the fuel to say, okay, so you think uh, you're better or, you mm -hmm. know, but I'll, uh, I'll show you, I'll prove you, I'll prove right. you wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think so. We are probably the first black African captain for an under nine, uh, well, yeah, an under 19 uh, provincial team. Yeah. I think just another side note, I think she watched the movie 42. It's like mm -hmm. Jackie Robinson story. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen it? I think, yeah, I've seen it a yeah. while back. I see, I see you as like the SA version of Jackie Robinson. Yeah. The racism he experienced in baseball. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah. 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 So yeah, that's, that, that is, yeah, that's why I'd say when you say like what caught you, kept you going, that is one of the things that really. To be better. Yeah. To be, to be better. Like yeah. nobody can, you know, uh, you know, uh, keep me down or push me down, but also mm. like challenges. Uh, I thrive on, mm. on, on challenges. So. Yeah, I think that, that that's that really got me going. Okay, so in high school you went to Capricorn High School, right? Yeah. So there you represented the whole of Limpopo from under fifteen throughout mm -hmm. to the senior men's team. Yeah. So how did you handle that pressure of having to represent your home? Did you ever feel like, what if I what if I like let them down, or what if I let myself mm -hmm. down, or? Because funny enough, no. Um, at the time, the my only uh, competition is like uh, my skill and mm -hmm. me making sure that I'm better today than um, I mean, or today I train uh, to be better tomorrow than mm -hmm. what I am today. So mm -hmm. I never looked at everything as a whole. Uh, I just isolated to myself. Uh, what can I bring to the team? What what is my um, role in the team mm -hmm. and what I do? So. Once I isolated on that, I never really thought about nothing else phased me. Yeah, mm. uh, not mm. really. Like, yeah, uh, I guess that's uh, one thing that uh, I can do quite easily is um, just isolate. It's just like, okay, this is what I need to do, oh. regardless of uh, stuff uh, on the side. Um, I didn't let it affect what I'm trying to oh. do. It's a good and a bad thing because uh, yeah, probably yeah, like. Awareness night wise, I wasn't really aware of everything that's happening around me. Uh, but uh, in the end, in terms of me executing what I need to do at the time, it helped me do that. Personally, I feel like it's more good than bad because you actually yeah. focused on yourself. Yeah. And you didn't care about what the other people had to say. That's very yeah. important. Yeah. Because a lot of people fall, like when they hear mm. comments behind them, people mm. are saying, now this guy can't do that. And yeah. then they think they can't do it. But yeah. like it's all a matter of focusing on yourself and building your own skill. Yeah. So no, like respect no. to that. Respect no, to thanks, that. thanks. Yeah. So no. did you feel like a big shot when you became the under, um, the captain or the people that were? Well, not so much as a big shot. I think I found it as an opportunity. Um, okay. In that, uh, from 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 that, because I'd always like with um, the dynamics of how mm -hmm. teams were structured at the time. It's like. Okay, if you, it was mainly uh, the, the, the white players that will be batting, in, they do the batting in the top order, oh. and then they also do a bulk of the bowling. Where in a cricket team, you see like batters, you see like bowlers. Yeah. And the batters bat, the bowlers bowl. Mm. So for me, I saw that as an opportunity to say, okay, like with the team that I work with, 
If you're a batsman, you're batting the top six, you bat. The guys that are the bowlers um, in the bottom six, they're going to bowl. They're the ones that get the first preference. So you don't find a uh, way you just have uh, black players selected in a team just to make up numbers, just to be there, you know. You're, you're, you're selected as a bowler, but you play the game and you only bowl three or four overs in a game. Mm. Um, whereas a guy gets to bat and bowls his 10 overs, you know. So I, I found that, you know, I just wanted the team to function as what you're selected for. If you're a bowler, you bowl your 10 overs. If you're a batsman, you score the runs. If you bowl a few overs here and there when you need it, that's that's fine. But that's the way I saw that major opportunity for that. And mm -hmm. just uh, yeah, and also like just thinking on the back of when I was selected as captain, just uh, one guy I must say that also was uh, quite great at the time. We had a coach um, called Johan Rudolph. I don't know if you're familiar with Jack Rudolph. Um, he played for the uh, Proteas as well at the time. His dad. Um, was the coach of the senior team, uh, the Limpopo senior team at the time. And um, when I was elected as captain, um, just we were going for training, and um, I just noticed, hey, man, there's a lot of people at, at the training session, which was never like the training session. We don't have really parents there, but there was just a lot of parents um, there at the training session. So then our coach takes us um, into the change room, and... Um, and he's like, uh, yeah, so guys, um, and I wasn't sure what was happening. I was just thinking, oh, okay, we have a training session. Oh. There's a lot of parents here. I mean, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, no, um, whoever doesn't want to be co uh, captain uh, by me in this team, they can, they can leave. And I'm like, oh, okay, what is happening now? So and um, an he's like, meeting. yeah, but then uh, apparently like all the parents, uh, they did not want um, me yeah. as, a, as a captain. So they came and were petitioning that, you know, you can't have me as a captain. Was but it then, because of the color of your skin? Yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, so uh, so then, yeah, then that's when he came in and he's like, you know, he told the guys, if, if, if you don't want to be captain by this guy, then leave. And at least nobody left. And yeah, then we, try, we, we carried on. But uh, from the kind of confidence, like uh, from what he did at that time, I was like, oh, okay, so yeah, these guys are actually, mm -hmm. yeah, it, 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 it backs, uh, he backs me. So and then I was like, okay, yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I can do this, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, so that was quite, uh, quite a cool thing. And and mind you, at the time I was still in uh, standard nine then, um, so I was captaining my matric, uh, my matric. Yeah, it's a metric. Yeah, I was, I was um, yeah, I was captaining my captain at school at the time. So also the dynamics of uh, captaining guys that are older than me and that captain me at school mm. was also kind of weird. Yeah, yeah a very weird yeah. dynamic as well. But yeah, but at least we still we we got through it. I just kind of thought, okay, I'm gonna do what I need to do, like it or not. Mm. But also when the coach he said that statement, it's like, okay, if you stay. You know, um, then it means you agree to being captain by this guy. And like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So yeah, that was also another moment there. That I was like, oh, okay. Uh, that kind of gave me the confidence. Yeah, the confidence boost to mm -hmm. say, yeah, you know, um, as long as you just keep uh, cricket. Cricket is the main thing. That's what brings us together. And we kappa. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in two thousand and seven, you moved to Pretoria mm -hmm. on a sports yes. bursary. Yeah, yeah. So you studied in UP, University mm. of Pretoria. So yeah. how was how was the transition from living in Sichejo to living in Pretoria? Like, sure. was it difficult for you to fit in when you like, moved? Yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, my sister was already in UP, which mm. is one of the things that kind of okay. got me to go mm. to UP. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, 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 the difference was huge because... I mean, like even like back then, internet. Like you get there, you've got your internet labs and stuff. And, mm. and I remember even the first time they go there, you get there, and they're like, "Yeah, you can just surf the internet." <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like surfing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I actually, like, because uh, uh, my uncle, he, I said this, like, "Yeah, no, you can surf for like an hour." Uh, on the internet and I sat there looking at the screen I didn't know what to do <laughs> I did not know what the internet was they're like yeah search engines what is a search engine <laughs> what do I do <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. those are the things where it, it, it took me like a, a bit of time to kind of learn like, oh, okay, there's this, there's internet. Uh, and also like uh, uh, Polupan is a small town, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, you, everybody knows everyone. Uh, and now I'm in Pretoria, I can see this person today and I'll never meet them again. Never. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the... Yeah. It's like so you the, know Julius Palema. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that, that was uh, an interesting, like a new uh, dynamic. And yeah, like uh, seeing all of that, that, that was uh, quite exciting, I must say. Like, um, I think probably because I played cricket, it helped ground me a lot because I think you know, the possibility of me spiraling. Uh, yeah. Was was and and back then I don't know if you guys are familiar <laughs> with uh, the square, uh, yeah, square. Man. Oh, okay, Hatfield Square. Um, oh, Hatfield. <laughs> I don't know. If you... <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you yeah. know they, it's. Uh, <laughs> well, a lot of alcohol. Yeah, a lot of alcohol gets cons- consumed in that in that, in that area because <laughs> it's just like it's a square and you just got so many like different pubs. You got clubs. You got all in one. One area in one block in one, block. In one yeah like okay yo like it's one big area I'm yeah like, it's a square yeah. and, um, and there's just the Florida Road of Pretoria or something huh? like the Florida Road of Pretoria you know, so, like, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. literally um, and it's just students mm-hmm. uh, and I mean you've got like uh, drink specials every every day um, mm-hmm. there was a place I think you had like ten rand I think I like, got for an hour every old place at ten rand mm-hmm. at one of the places yeah like mm-hmm. you had those kind of stuff. So um, that's where, like, uh, especially, like, even um, my, one of the, because when I came in, there was only, like, three other black players yeah. playing for tax at the time. And uh, obviously, like, you're going to stick mm, together. Yeah, and one of them had yeah. a car, and just, you were driving, like, a, a, a Beamer, mm. one series. And, yeah, like, yo, when I met him, uh, the big shock for me, uh, I'd, I'd say it was, um, I met him. And uh, he's like, yeah, man, let's go to the square. <laughs> square. She's like, come, we go uh, straight after training. We go to the square, and guys are drinking, and I'm just, I'm not used to it. I've never seen this mm. before. Because for me, after training, you go home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but then now uh, I don't have curfew. Um, you know, you've got your own room. Yeah, and now okay. the lifestyle is different completely now. Uh, completely yeah. different. And then the guys, they start at the square, you have some drinks, and then next thing, hey, now there's a party at this house. And then from there, you go into the party, and it's it's a whole different different ball game. And then next mm. thing you look, it's already three o'clock. Mm. You've got classes tomorrow morning, you've got school. So yeah, that was a, a, a culture shock. And um, just, yeah, I was just very fortunate that having a bursary, I knew, okay, I have to pass or else I have to pay for my studies. Mm-hmm. And that is a non negotiable. Mm-hmm. And uh, then also, you have to play well so that you can maintain the bursary. So I think for me, that kind of structure, yeah, it really kept me. Because then when guys are like, ah, but no, let's, let's go out. And I'm like, I know each guy's, I gotta, you have to keep study. discipline. Yeah, yeah, I had to keep discipline because yeah. nobody's gonna pay. Me. I knew mm. tuition is expensive, cricket is expensive already. Cricket my is dad expensive. is like, I'm not gonna pay uh, two thousand rand for that, <laughs> you know. Uh, and if he does do that, I know that yeah, that is it's a lot of money. So mm. when they've done that investment, I can't now just be. No, can't just sit around and not yeah, play. especially you know, at that time. And Two thousand was a lot. At that yeah, time. and also because of that uh, tiff I had with my dad, because obviously now I, I said no, I'm not going to be a doctor, mm. and um, that's why even like I had to get a bursary because yeah, my dad was like, okay, you know, to be a doctor, you know, we'll, you know, go pay him the tuition mm. and everything, mm. but then I was like, no, I'll get my own. I got my bursary. You don't have to pay anything. I'm doing sports science, even though it's not the path they. They wanted me to go in, but I was like, you know what, I, I, I don't need, you know, I, everything is handled. And Sham I, Shar, I don't know why I thought like that because they paid for my accommodation. <laughs> they were sending me uh, money for food and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But at least I was like, you know what, um, you don't have to pay for, uh, the for the school itself, fees. Yeah. 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 And stuff like that. I, I'll, uh, I must a make sure. Off their shoulders. Yeah. So I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't fail because I made that decision to say, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go your way. I'm going to go my way. Um, I couldn't fail. Yeah. And I think that is one thing that really 
uh, kept me uh, like going for a long time. And mm. one thing that um, I I got to a point I struggled with cricket because um, like I think this was when I was like already like in my third year or something. Mm. I wasn't enjoying playing the game as much uh, mm. because um, like the the, 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 I was always playing with a chip on my shoulder, like, yeah, no, I'll show you, I'll show you. And then once you achieve um, mm. most you of the stuff achieve? you want to achieve, mm. then, that, the, the, then that, that fuel is not there anymore. Mm. You know, then um, I remember I had to, like, I just actually had to see a sports psychologist. Um, mm. And yeah, I went there and, you know, then talked through these things and got to highlight that, I actually, you know, I'm like, yeah, there's stuff you need to sort out with your dad and so on. And because I, I didn't even realize that um, me just kind of thinking <clears throat> that my, my dad was always, um, you know, against me. Like, oh, no, I must do this. Uh, I felt like it was against me with me doing cricket, pursuing cricket. And actually realized, no, um, that's not the case. He yeah. actually loved me. He just wanted to. I mean, I'm here today because of him. Because yeah. he pushed me to study. And, yeah. and, and so... Then when I got to that realization, and, and that anger wasn't there anymore, that, that challenge wasn't there, then I had to kind of learn how to set new goals uh, yeah. uh, and actually play cricket without that thing. Oh, yeah, no, I'll show you, I'll show yeah. you, because now I've kind of done most yeah. of the stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a, a huge like a transition I had to make in thought process-wise. They say, they say they have a chip on their shoulder, like your accomplishments don't belong to you. They belong mm. to the people you're trying to prove wrong. Mm. And maybe could be the reason why your goals or your accomplishments never felt like they belong to you. Yeah. They belong to someone else and you don't get that reaction you're looking mm. for. It means nothing. So yeah. That was a big yeah. show of growth for you. Like, yeah, no. Just it was. Your own thing, yeah. Because mm. yeah, it was like the weirdest thing. I didn't know what was happening. Like, yeah, literally you go and you, you play and yeah, there's just no love. Like, you just start mm. thinking, like, what am I doing here? Um, you try, and it's almost like, you know, the more you try, the more you fail, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a really, like, I don't know, the mind is a powerful thing. That's mm, one thing yeah. for sure. That's why yeah. I was just like, because every time when they're like, they switch us down, they see a psychologist. I'm like, oh, <laughs> psychologist, hey, guys, I'm not crazy, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but actually, it's one of the best, it's the best best decision i made it was mm. just okay no go see this guy and yeah and it's uncomfortable and when you you know you go through you have to talk about these things and uh dig deep into why you do this and that mm. and yeah i know that helped that really helped a lot and yeah no i think yeah with, with through all of that oh i know uh the the the, the journey of uh family um, that you or what can I say, family, what you want to achieve, and um, you know, schooling, everything. It, it's actually quite a lot on, 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 on yeah, on a growing yeah. individual, yeah. And if you don't see somebody or at least talk about it, hey, you're gonna, yeah, I still, you're gonna have problems. Yeah. So while you were studying in UP, mm -hmm. you played for Tux. Yeah. You played for Northerns and the Titans. So yeah. were these all happening at the same time? Were you playing for these teams at the same time? Or did it happen one after another? Yeah, uh, kind of one after another. Um, I was fortunate that I, I played already. Uh, so for Limpopo, I started playing uh, semi-professional mm -hmm. before I left uh, Limpopo, which helped me get the bursary mm -hmm. to, um, to tax. Mm -hmm. So at least by then, they already knew that, okay, like um, he's already playing semi-professional cricket. And kind of automatically then started playing. So Northerns is the semi-professional team for, um, uh, for what, how, not Houting, but uh, for Pretoria area. Yeah, and then the Titans is the main team. So yeah, that was the dream, playing for Titans, playing for Titans. So, oh, so at least it was like a building thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at least like I played for for uh, for for tax. So tax was my bread and butter. Okay. Where obviously yeah. um, they pay for my studies. Yeah. Um, I can't. Whenever I'm available, I have to play for them. If I'm not available, um, that's when you're paying for Northerns, the semi-professional team. And yeah, and they. Uh, that's where I learned a lot as well. They that now because when we're in Pretoria. You started having more black players in the in the in the team, 
where I learned from. And then also we had a black captain. Uh, mm -hmm. the Aaron, I don't know if you might know Aaron Pangiso. Um, he plays for, he played for the Proteas as well. But yeah, he was also mm -hmm. captain. Uh, he was captain of our team at the time. And yeah, they were, they were pivotal and also like growing me. And then you, then you get to see that our shots actually, you know, back players yeah. are, are good and they represent and, you know, uh, flamboyant and, you know, we can express ourselves within a team. So that was, um, uh, uh, like uh, when I started playing Northerns and doing well, then um, also played for the Titans, uh, also did well for like uh, with universities as well. You get university, uh, like a national universities team. Uh, that were, that we also like uh, when you go to the national tournaments, you get selected for it and then they play other you know, international universities. Mm -hmm. That also kind of exposure um, helped me to also get into the Titans team. And yeah, so yeah, it kind of just kept on going uh, year by year. Within that, it was within a three-year period. Okay. Um, but I feel like you were fighting fights for the next generation that they were able to fight when they get to the level you were at. Yeah. So like being the first black people in that environment mm. and like expanding yourself in that in that mm. space that you expand horizons and when the next generation, the next black, you know, bunch of kids that come into that space, don't need to fight the same things you had to fight. Yeah. And you become more accustomed to having black people in mm. the spaces you were in. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 very true. And especially from Limpopo side, because uh, we only had um, a player called Ethim Balati. I mean, he was the first guy from, he was from, he's from Palabora. He made it all the way to the Titans. And, um, he was like the guy that I looked up to, to be like, because every time, like, even when I remember when I moved to tax, uh, the guys are like, no, I don't go to tax. There's no black players to play for tax. You're going to probably end up playing second team or mm -hmm. third team, mm -hmm. you know, like, just don't, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I just, just kind of shut that off and be mm -hmm. like, you know what? Um, I'm my own guy. I'll, I'll, I'll forge my way, you mm -hmm. know, whether we would like fail or whether I do, well, I'll, I'd rather fail trying, yeah. you know. Yeah, plan, so plan along the yeah, way. so luckily, like through doing that as well, it kind of um, helped the, the 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 next coming generation. And also, I knew that me being there where I got to and being able, if I go back home, I can talk to the guys and say, no, this is the way. This is what's gonna happen. We can look out for this mm. and that and that. Yeah, mm. so definitely. But uh, honestly speaking, though, like when you're in that journey. You don't consciously think about, okay, I'm doing this for the for the guys mm. coming in. You're so focused on, on now. now. And fighting your day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and fighting my dad. Yeah, and my, yeah, my dad was like, um, even when um, the first time I was selected for the uh, semi professional Limpopo team, I was still in matric. And uh, obviously, I need to pass matric. Matric yeah. is a big thing. Yeah. And uh, so we had a training session. And I, I think I asked my dad to take me because uh, it's quite a, it's a bit of a walk from Capricorn to the cricket club to train. And uh, my dad's like, no, you shouldn't go to training there. Um, you need to study. You need to pass. Mm. And I was like, ah, okay, fine. But then so I took, went to school, took my kit bag. After training, I walked. I walked to the cricket club <laughs> and I went to training. <laughs> and I don't know how he found out um that i was there and then sure that was one of the scariest days of my life <laughs> i was there training and the coach was addressing us we're having a team meeting and then i see my dad walking across the field coming to us and i'm like sure. <laughs> you didn't start a change <laughs> yo i was just thinking like oh my goodness because now he's i'm assuming he's coming to take me he's like hey you're supposed to be home you're supposed to be studying uh, and luckily, then our coach again, um, the same coach that uh, uh, fought for me to be captain. And then he went aside to him with him, spoke to him. And then I saw that my dad leaving. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like so, so, something, something was right there. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so hey, I know with my dad, I, I, I sometimes I feel like I, I, I'm sorry for through <laughs> 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 through so much because yeah, I was probably a stubborn uh, kid by then, and probably my boys are gonna show me flames as well. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Hey, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. So in your moments of feeling like you can't do this anymore, because mm. I'm sure you've had those moments where you're like, nah, I want to quit cricket. I want to leave this thing alone because things are not working out right now. Mm. So how did you get through that that time period? How did you continue? Um, I think it was just that original decision I had made that I'm I'm gonna. It's my decision, and I'm gonna go through it. Because uh, as I said, like my parents, they said, "No, you go be a doctor," mm. and I said, "No, um, I'm gonna be uh, a sports scientist. I'm gonna be." A professional cricket player. I think that original decision just kept me going. Oh. Uh, I was just like, I can't, I, I can't fail. It, mm. it, it was I'm not allowed to. Yeah, yeah. Because then yeah. if I fail, then yo, oh, my dad's gonna be on me, and mm. you know, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ish. I was just Ish. like, there's no ways this this can this can fail. So mm -hmm. I think that was one of the, the 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 big things that was just like, just I don't know, just just carry on, and and probably the they are i'm trying to think like uh like coaches as well that put trust in me oh. um to to fight for me at some instances uh, for me to be where i was oh. um i think that also kind of pushed me and also i think having a the the bursary kind of gives you oh, yeah. responsibility a feeling yeah. of responsibility yeah. you feel like you know i, I can't i can't let uh, can't people down yourself. yeah like they're kind of paying me to 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 do to to deliver a service for them. So then I was like, you know, even if I'm not feeling good, but yeah, I must go perform on the field or, or do this, and I must still study. I must pass. Yeah. So I think that was the thing that just kept pushing me through. My the, the account. I think I guess I took accountability yeah. to say this is what I want to do, and I can't get it wrong. It was my choice. Nobody else forced me to do it. Because probably if maybe I just gone with what uh, maybe my, my parents have just said, yeah, no, you know, do this. When I got hard, I could have just been like, ah, but I, uh, this is not what I chose for myself anyway, so. Mm, the decision wasn't yours to make. So yeah. You know, then, yeah, mm. I understand. So in 2008, you were selected for the South African USSA team. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel achieving this? Like, sure. having been selected, how did you feel to say like, wow, I'm actually here now, like, this is, yeah, like tangible ed evidence mm. that I am growing as a person. Yeah, no, that was way I, I felt that, and I think that was yeah my first uh, selection at a national uh, yeah. tour, yeah, national mm. level. Because mm. all the times you go to a competition and then you see every they call other people up, mm. and you're just like, oh, geez, I want to be that guy. Yeah. And then, yeah, once it happened, you. I was I was so happy and it gave you that like, I'm that guy. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can you're not that bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I can actually do this. Yeah. I can actually go through it. Yeah. yeah, and 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 the funny thing was because uh for me at that time I just kept things so simple. Mm -hmm. I was it wasn't even my goal. Um it was my first year. I was still a junior um uh, for the team. And I just kept things simple, 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 simple. And when I saw that I was just like, wow, okay. So mm -hmm. yeah, actually Hmm. This 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 could be this could be me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that that gave me a lot of validation. I hmm. must say, big time. Oh, okay. So in 2011, you went on to be selected for the National Cricket Academy. Hmm. So what was going through your head now at this time? Now you're being selected for another national level cricket team. Now they hmm. want you. So now what's what's going through your mind? As is to so, me now, like yo, I'm alone now. Where's my head? Yeah, no, at, at that time, then that's when I knew, okay, um, I'm like two steps away from playing for your country. Mm -hmm. That's where it gets real that, ah, oh, no, this is actually, this is a profession. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, you can sustain a life and change uh, your family's life from this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where it got to the realization that, ah, oh, yeah, okay, this is. It's, 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 it's big now. Um, so yeah, uh, when that happened, it really, and also it gave me, um, that validation that I made the right choice. Uh, you know, That's, then also yeah. then you see when you give the news to your, my dad and now my dad is happy for me. That's why I went into that transition where, uh, things got, 
the chip of my shoulder was gone because then you see because mm, yeah now then my dad yeah. is now happy for me and he's like just you know i'm yeah. proud of you he's encouraging yeah you know he's probably been doing that but then it's it just that now like now i yeah. see it yeah you didn't you weren't able to comprehend it yeah yeah okay. yeah so then when i when i saw that and uh you know then it, it got real that oh shit yeah no, i made the right decision um you know now it's time to keep on you know um so yeah that was uh quite nice but also that's uh when i was there when i started experiencing like my first major injuries as well so then yeah I, then the psychological side of injuries uh, comes in um that you know when you're injured you're not playing if you're not playing you're not making money um that's where the science part uh, for me started kind of clicking in to say oh okay Is actually what I studied is is quite big in terms of um mm. the playing yeah what I'm going mm. through and um that's why I was very fortunate that I played at that level and I also studied um, the right the yeah. right subject though, yeah it's right. like like what's going to be journey like yeah yeah start falling into place properly and uh that's where like uh yeah I'm a Christian man and uh you know like when they say god like just kind of sets up all these things yeah because yeah. i didn't deliberately do it uh, yeah it, it just happened like you know you pray for things and then like when you start seeing them click like like oh okay um i see this is the part this is where i'm supposed to be mm-hmm. exactly yeah so even when i knew then okay even if i'm not going to make it as a player um my studies can oh, still yeah. get me to operate at an international level Huh. Yeah. So did you how was your experience playing at at the National Cricket Academy? Like did you experience mm-hmm. racism or uh no at that at that point in time um I'd say cuz uh, Limpopo obviously it's a smaller place. Mm-hmm. So once I moved to Pretoria that's when I experienced cricket a whole lot differently mm-hmm. where it's not so all uh white dominated mm. and you know that's why I say I think I had so straightforward yeah, yeah so uh cricket was just about your skill like mm-hmm. uh, the best skilled players play period you know so then and I enjoyed that more uh, mm-hmm. in that you knew that okay my fellow player that I'm playing with he's also as skilled and if not more skilled than I am and you can rely on him yeah. to make sure they do this mm-hmm. yes yeah I think that is the main major thing is because you know you're there because of your skill and nothing else. You know, so I think that was uh, uh the big transition as well uh from playing from Limpopo uh to playing to playing uh, yeah. yeah at yeah. national level there yeah, you don't even uh kind of get that that that, that uh, sense of uh, the racism when it's just that obviously you different people uh it's just dealing with different uh, well, uh personalities mm-hmm. yeah and uh, obviously different personalities because you're from different backgrounds mm-hmm. yeah but uh funny that the national academy was good because also they um everybody they try and make everybody feel the same because you also get like um uh what's that like you you kind of all getting the same amount of money to spend so you kind of they kind of bridge that gap where you felt like you know uh, this guy now he can go buy a KFC you or for this and then you feel like oh, I've got nothing um but you know everybody you kind of you have the same so it kind of help level that playing field uh, a little bit yeah but they are now playing for the national academy that's where you like you, you learn to be a professional um then you start taking your training seriously actually learning about the game of cricket and tactically and learning about history mm. players that came before you because also i thought uh, as i said like uh, we like in Bobo, we were the first like uh, the black players to do this and that but then we learned there was from eons yeah. and years and years ago before that there was uh, black cricketers that were blazing the trail and mm. uh, really doing well and also paved the way for me to have the opportunity because mm. i didn't have just that opportunity as well myself from Norway because mm-hmm. we had an NTN I think uh, according to cricket like with um you have your Baker's mini cricket and you have your MTN um uh I think there was a big sponsor because the coaches we had in Sichuan mm-hmm. were paid by sponsors somebody created that 
for me to have a coach in Sisho to go to, because if I had to just go, but I went to training at, at school and they chased me away. If I didn't have coaches in no, Sisho, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here today. That's so, still happening even today. In terms of? Those sponsorships is still continuing. So. Not as much um, as, yeah, back then, we had a like I say, sponsor was a lot more. Um, mm. Now, especially after COVID, it's oh. it's it's really really difficult. Um, um, so that's why yeah, we even us like now, uh, whenever I I can uh, help, I need to um, get some sponsors. Yeah, try and get sponsors in uh, or sponsor ourselves and uh, to just give kids equipment mm. and so on, or even try and get funds to. Uh, find a, a coach to work there because you know there, there's, there's a real need because now that funding used to be quite there quite a lot we had like three or four coaches yeah. now i think we only have one yeah. you know so that's wild yeah. yeah so but then uh, i must say like uh, in terms of like csa they do uh, uh i mean they built hub programs uh csa does fund a lot of that now um which is quite quite nice mm -hmm. actually yeah I say there is one coach in Sisho, but now there's a coach in Sisho, there's a coach in like uh, in different parts of the whole Capricorn oh. or Limpopo region. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think back then, mainly just at Palavora and uh, Sisho that had a few coaches, but now you have coaches throughout the whole I of the area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, no, yeah, that, 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 that might be a great idea. <laughs> Okay. Um, so let's take it back to 2008, mm -hmm. where you shadowed under the former first-class cricketer who later became the fitness coach for India and South African national cricket teams, mm -hmm. Greg King. Yes. Yeah. So what made you choose him? What made you say, like, this guy is special? I want to I wanna uh -huh. focus on him because I feel like he has something that will make me better as a person. Uh, yeah. Uh, he gave us understanding of why you should do what you do. So like uh, throughout the years, when you are training or you go to the gym, mm. um, you just get there and there's a program and they say, do this, 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 this. And then you do it and then you leave. Um, but uh, he was the first trainer I worked with. It's like, oh, you know what? You need to do this because of X, Y, Z. Mm. And then now I have the accountability to do it because I understand why I need to do it. Whereas back then you just rock up and, as a player, you rock up and you're like, okay, no, you're doing this and this today. You just look, okay, you do it. Whether I do it well or not, it doesn't long matter. Just as long as I was there, I've done it. And then I, I move on, you know. So he was the first guy that actually broke things down for us. And funny enough, his stuff seemed very easy. It was, mm. He just made it look basic, mm. easy. You understood it. And we got results. Like I started, mm. you could see, oh, just, uh, I'm, I'm feeling better at this. I'm feeling better. And I think that's what really got me by into uh, with him. And uh, he also then knew that I studied sports science. And right. he's like, oh, he studied. And um, so he kind of then explained a little bit more. And then, yeah, he suddenly became, he was my mentor even till now. If um, I've got any questions, I'll just still oh. refer to him and say, <laughs> yeah, what do you think about this and mm -hmm. that? Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, that, that's why I more yeah. gravitated towards him. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you, you graduated in 2010 and mm -hmm. then became a semi-professional player at Northern. So mm -hmm. you still weren't experiencing any pressure because that's not where your head was at. Or was there a bit of pressure, like yeah, something uh, building on you? Uh, now in 20, yeah, in 2010, that's when you, uh, the first semi-pro contracts started mm -hmm. then. So then you were kind of like, uh, you got, uh, that was like my first contract mm -hmm. where you got, no, actually not. It wasn't the first contract. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, um, let's say, like a, a proper one where I could uh, pay for accommodation. Yeah. And then um, you're also getting, uh, you're paying medical aid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you've got uh, uh, unemployment fund stuff, type stuff. So then that's when you're like, oh, okay, you, you're grown up now, you know? And um, so, yeah, when, when, you, when you get that kind of, yeah, like contract now, this responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, oh, just okay, no, I'm, I'm an employee now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. There's expectation yeah. that you must do certain things. And um, 
but again, uh, even when when I when that was the case, uh, I just kept things very simple, mm -hmm. and at least I still carried on uh, getting like good accolades, and I think I was almost like two to three years in a row um, the best uh, uh, bowler um, throughout the years uh, while I was oh. contracted to them. So oh. at least. Um, yeah, it was. I just kept on going. The only thing that was frustrating me was that um, I wasn't getting uh, to play for the first team. Oh, so um, yeah. So that's where you know you always because the semi pro team is like the B team, mm -hmm. you know, and you're always trying to push for for the first team. But then I think it was until because what, what was frustrating, they kept on telling me that you know um, you're not quick enough uh, with the bowling or you know, um, that was, line and length was always my, my thing, but they're like, no, but you're just lacking pace, pace. or this, yeah. yeah. And that was the thing that was uh, frustrating because then you still get the accolades to say, just you are the best at, uh, best bowler in the team for the year, but then you're still being told, no, you're not going to play for the first team because you're lacking this. It was good they told me because then I worked on it to try and improve on it. Uh, but then now I look back at, uh, like you look at the, uh, the, the career Vernon had, uh, Philander. I mean, he didn't necessarily have all the big pace, yeah. but his accuracy and his skill is Nothing second to none. Well. Yeah, they highlighted <laughs> that, they used that, and he was very successful at international. It's good. I was just like, you know, you needed the strengthening and conditioning. Yeah, because actually, yeah, for the pace. I, yeah, for the pace. Yeah. I started, that's where I started yeah, dabbling yeah, with, yeah. Um, like, uh, uh, trying to set up exercises, mm -hmm. even myself. Mm -hmm thinking, okay, how can I get bowling quicker? And yeah, uh, it started getting me thinking outside the box to say, how do I bowl quicker? Um, that's where actually I started. I, I was glad they told me, but then still they never kind of uh, told me like, you know, your X factor is you've got good skill, you've got line and length, you've got this. Even if I could have exploited that maybe a little bit more, I, it, it could have been a different trajectory, yeah, yeah. you know, but um, I, I still yeah, think... Yeah. It does happen for a reason because now I did uh, delve into how do I get quicker? Yes, I've got line in it, but how do I get quicker? And actually, and now I mean in the industry, that is the biggest thing that, mm. you know, that, that people want, want, you know, they want more pace. You want to see uh, guys getting hit on the helmet. You want to see, you know, uh, you know, everything must be, must be fast, bowlers must be fast. Mm. So now I already started that process uh, over 10 years ago, trying to learn how do you improve in pace and, and stuff? So I'm glad that I, uh, at least I've done a lot of trial and error as to how do I do that? So uh, even till today, you're still learning to perfect how to improve a player's pace without being, getting them in danger. Because that's the thing, like uh, there's a lot of factors that you need to consider in that process to get a player to bowl quicker because you need to, yeah, considering technique, uh, movements, uh, the strength factors, uh, and then you know, speed, power, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, but at least, yeah, that's, that's one thing that I did, um, I guess, like encountering with the, the professional game is that, yeah, you have those, um, uh, like the, the chats with the head coaches to say, okay, why are you not picking me over uh, this guy? It's, yeah, it was the pace, but yeah, uh, even though later to find out, as I say, there was very it's like, okay, actually, the pace wasn't everything because I got obsessed over it. Yeah, uh, at a, at yeah, a point, I just can like, imagine because, like, this is the only thing holding you back from becoming what you want. Yeah, so, like, you, yeah, you know, you, yeah. yeah, you just obsess so much over it and then you forget what you're actually good at. Yeah, yeah you know, so you forget to focus on those also. Yeah, you know, so mm -hmm. that was uh, quite a, it, well, it was a good learning journey uh, for me on how to. Uh, you know, hold and get there. Eventually, I had to move. I had to oh, uh, I moved from uh, Titans uh, to to Free State so that I can play for the first team. Oh. Yeah. So, but yeah. So in the same year, you became an overseas professional. If mm. correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now, before you before you boarding the plane, which country did you go to? before uh, oh uh, England England okay. yeah. so before you board the plane you get on now what are you thinking like are you thinking about home are you thinking about 
with letting the team down, right? I think so. No. You're just thinking, <laughs> I'm going to England now. I think so. Yeah. I'm becoming a professional overseas. You know, yeah, because, yeah. uh, yo, um, actually, because even uh, before I took the contract, I was, I actually, I was accepted to study my honors yeah. in sports science then. Mm. And I was just about to start the year. And um, I remember, like, because uh, obviously I was missing a lot of class because of playing. Um, so, hey, when I started the honors year, you, I showed me flames. Like, yeah, I was yeah. missing. Because yeah, also, if you don't attend lecture and, and this, then, you know, uh, you get delayed on some work. And I was trying to keep up and struggling. Then um, the agent was always like, yeah, man, this is a good team. Come over, you know, it's extra money, good money, good experience. And I was just like, sure. And I remember, I think uh, now, but I was scared now. Calling my dad because my dad they were happy with you. You're studying honors, mm. good. And now I have to tell them, you guys, actually, I'm thinking of stopping studying and going playing overseas. That was like, ish, that was my first issue. Oh. And then at least, like, I spoke to a funny, a great advice. Um, our um, head of department, sports science at the time, I sat down with them and I'm like, yo, ish, uh, I want to do this, but I'm struggling. But um, there's an opportunity to do this. And he's like, hey, contracts with playing, obviously, they don't come around every day. Studies, you always, you can always do your honors. You can always do your master's. It's like, ah, go. And uh, I think once he gave me that blessing, I said, like, okay, uh, I'm going, yeah. And yeah, I don't know how my dad felt at the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, he was supported. I told him, and he's, he's I guess you, you, at that point, you're thinking, ah, what, what else can I do? Yeah, and then yeah, you can't, then, you can't be disappointed for your child achieving something. Yeah, <laughs> so, so eventually, now nah, he was uh, he was fine. So when I left, um, sure, I was happy. I was like on cloud nine, like going to a different country, mm-hmm. uh, you know, playing the experience, like just because you can reinvent yourself. Yeah. Nobody knows no, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, with a where you, it's just you yourself, and um, you, you start. Build. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And also they you're the main guy. So <laughs> you you must just make sure like that kind of responsibility helped also shape me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then yeah, it was a bit scary, but more exciting uh than than being scared. Yeah, mm-hmm. another excitement of just you don't know what you're getting there. Yeah. <sighs> just just yeah, that, that was quite uh, exciting, I'd mm-hmm. say. That's nice. So mm-hmm. what was your what would you say was your biggest challenge when you arrived in England? Like, what was what did you find as the hardest thing to get used to? Oh, the cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're not built for cold. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two different places. Two different places. Yeah. Like, is immediately when you walk out the airport mm-hmm. and that cold, like. It felt like the cold is alive. You know when you yeah. it like it like it like bounds you and it's like yeah. it's like sticking on you. And then your skin oh, starts to go. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what have I got myself into here? It was seriously cold then. And I was just like, whoa, whoa. There's no way. Like I was constantly like five layers of yes. of yeah. clothing the whole time. And also like the, it rains there a lot. And yeah. we don't like when it rains in South Africa, you don't drink. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's all, yeah, no trigger. Yeah, we're done. Ah, babe. Ah, it starts drizzling when scared of a you, little you Carry on. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not, it's like the first time it happened. So now, again, we're doing fielding, and you're already, your hands are cold, the ball is hard. <laughs> no, this is too so. And then uh, it starts raining. I'm like, okay, sharp, we're done. So I, I start walking off the field. And then, like, hey, where are you going? I'm like, hey, it's raining. I'm done. They're like, no, no, no. If, if we if we don't train in this, we'll never train in in, in England. Uh, but then even other, I was just like, no, 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 I can't. It's too cold. <laughs> I yeah. Just, uh, but yeah, then yeah, that was I'd say the the most uh, the thing uh, that I got yeah most difficult thing. But also the uh, the most interesting thing um, is the first time like there, um, you were treated like a. I was just, I was an individual. Like they mm-hmm. treated the personality. Like uh, you don't even feel like there's a color mm-hmm. of your skin or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just you are the, it's you are doing me. Yeah. yeah, you know, you're yeah, just another person. And that's how they treated me there the whole time. And that was a new 
like it gave me a new perspective and thinking in terms of um, even my um, how I interact with white people in general. Sure. Because I, you know, you uh, from South Africa and the experiences that I've had, oh, you'd yeah. assume they're all the same, mm. you know. But then once I went there, then yes, I mean, the people that I met back then, mm. I still consider like very close family now. Every time I go to England, I'll make it a point to try and go and see them, mm. even till today. And they're just like, hey, man, they invite you for dinner. Like when I was there, like in the first week, uh, family said, yeah, I know, come, come have dinner at our place. And you go there, you meet their families and everybody's welcoming. And every, it's any, any day. It's nothing like South Africa. No, no, <laughs> nothing that, like it's it. nothing like South wow. Africa. It was like out of this world. I was just, yeah. I was amazed. Um, even like um, the lady we stayed with, like when we have dinner, like South Africa, you have dinner on TVs there, you're watching, you're just ah, eating, watching, oh. you don't really, yeah. uh, I'd say converse much, but you know, there's a lady like dinner, you sit at the table, TVs, nowhere close by, you must talk about your dining room. Oh. You know, dining room, you must talk about your table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> actual dining room. <laughs> actual dining room. <laughs> you, you know, and you know, that, and I'm thinking, what are we supposed to talk about here? Like, <laughs> And they're like, yeah, talk about your day. And uh, the, the, the guy I stayed with, um, so they got two overseas guys. Um, I was the one, the other one was from Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, so then, yeah, me and the guy, we built a very good bond as well. And and over like just dinner, like uh, then you start talking about your days. It got to a point where you look forward to it. At the end of the day, you go, know, oh, okay, I'm going to chill with mm -hmm. these people and we're going to talk about our day how did our day go with this and this and funny enough like everything we talk about relationships stuff like this mm -hmm. and and yeah it's a very different different culture but yeah i got uh, that was uh refreshing i think it changed my whole perspective in terms mm -hmm. of how now i'm going to be into like how i interact mm -hmm. with uh, people in general yeah. to say yeah people you're people it's all about personality and it's possible you know, um, we choose the way we treat people, mm. actually. Mm. It's yeah. not about the color of our skin. No, yeah. no. Mm. Yeah, so. So your first ever match in England, how mm. did that feel? To have to perform in front of thousands of people that you're not used to? Yo, yeah. Now, this uh, is a different crowd. No Vuvuzelas, there's yeah. no Vuvuzelas, there's no... <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm trying to remember, actually, the first, first one. Um... Sure, actually, yeah, and I think uh, like the first few, like things weren't going well because they were use a different ball, mm. and um, as I said, the weather as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think my first game was not great at all because also then um, it, it's almost like with the clubs, it's all about a battle of who's got the best pro. Mm. Yeah, so if you've got a pro that's bad, uh, like they, they they just play. Pro against pro. Uh, so when you're there, everybody is just telling you, oh, mate, I, the other pro is better than you. You, you are rubbish. <laughs> you know? yeah. And then they'll always refer to the one that was there last year. No, last year's pro was, yeah, you, last year's pro did this, he did this, he did this, he did that. And then they were trying to think, yeah, now I need to, I need to make sure that uh, I cover this. And it means he's very good in the sun. You know, yeah, and they had a few international players uh, as previous pros or guys that went on to play international. Just can I, you know, live up to this? So it was very nervy and um, it took a bit of time. I think I only kind of settled in into like the third game, fourth mm -hmm. game. Like once you then you get a good performance in, mm -hmm. then you're like, Okay. Like I actually <laughs> did good today. Yeah, you yeah. did good today. So yeah. uh, you got the team over the line. Um, so okay, yeah, like I can, you know, I got this. So yeah, but you know, the first few games, it was <laughs> tough. Yeah, but at least then went on to even like um, I think by the time I left in the season, I was like, uh, no, I think the third leading wicket taker in the whole league. Wow. At least so then I was like, okay, and. Nice. Yeah, it, it kind of worked out as time went yeah. on, just got better and better. But yeah, I know the first the culture shock. Yeah, it, oh. at first it's 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 weird. Okay, so you <laughs> were a junior team coach in the UK after that for about two seasons. Yeah. So now, how does it, now how do you feel having to be a coach training younger people that want to be like you? Yeah, uh, at first uh, I I did not like it, sure. mm. uh, especially. 
uh, the kids, they, it's their different ball game. Like they very, like, yeah, I'd say like parents, they, they, they discipline their kids, um, a lot more there. It's very more free spirited. Mm -hmm. Kids know their rights oh, yeah. and, um, they don't just listen to you off, off the bat. Uh, so it was difficult. Oh. Sure. I even, <laughs> I remember at some point I was like, no, why am I? I shouldn't have not agreed to this in my contract. Um, <laughs> now you don't I trade don't, in stubborn English kids. You know, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, sometimes like at the club, um, you get like you coach, because I was coaching in schools. Um, so the kids, they just come in like break time. They just all come in. And then if they want to play, they play. If they don't, they don't. And uh, then you get like little kids and then some of them start crying. Then you start dealing with uh, casualties from crying. And issues like that, and that was just not me. But then eventually, um, I got used to it, and oh. yeah, got to a place where I start like you start building bonds, and then ah, then you enjoy sure. enjoy yeah. working. But yeah, that was uh, a good learning curve uh, as well for me. Then I agree. Um, like when did your major injury happen so that you actually transitioned fully into sports science? Um, it happened in uh, just twenty twenty. In 2016, yeah, when um, I was in the, my third year of my professional contract, um, uh, my disc, uh, it was kind of not herniated, but because of overuse over the years, um, it kind of, uh, what do you call that, uh, ruptured. Oh. Yeah, so uh, it ruptured, so all the fluid, like uh, the fluid in my disc in L4, L5, it's pretty much gone. Yeah, so the, the options were either you fuse or you, it was, um, I think, infections, uh, another surgery. But it had, like, we were like, uh, it was like, if a complication happens, what happens? Okay, you, you might not walk. Ooh. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna do that. So, uh, like, uh, um, I decided then that, okay, I'll stop playing. I'm gonna go full time into training. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, luckily at the time, um, I had already started um, training, like the National Academy that I had attended. Yeah. Um, I'd started, because uh, I shadowed Great King. Yeah. In the next year, I, I actually, I was the SNC for the oh. for that academy. So, so okay. then, yeah, so I, I, oh, no, sorry. I shadowed him in the year after that oh. Um, oh. and worked with him. He showed me the ropes, how to do this, how to set up. Oh. And then in the year after that, then I ran the, the oh. academy. So, so you were like his successor in a way. Yeah, yeah. So um, once I decided I retired, then mm -hmm. I carried on with the academy and then started then Northerns. Yeah. Then okay. And mentally, like, you know, um, going back to your dad, the fight with him, running to proving a point, and now here your dream is mm. how did that mentally affect you trying to, you know, overcome that? Um, dealing with the fact that you can't. Do this anymore? Can't play anymore. Retire early. Yeah. Um. Uh, it wasn't actually wasn't that difficult. Um. Because I always knew that. Okay. Um. My dad always made me away. Already playing, I'm not gonna play forever. So you need to have something to fall back on. Okay. So <laughs> I knew that. Okay. With sports science, uh, already. That's why I started doing training earlier. Mm -hmm. That I knew that this was gonna be my my main things yeah. yeah you know so at least once uh, i started making that transition he was actually more he was very supportive oh, really? no <laughs> no no yeah no not even like I, at that point in time he's like i know he's um, accepted, you know yeah yeah he's like okay so now you're moving into yeah so he was actually the one making me away like you might not start with the salary you're used to so mm -hmm. just you know Oh, just, just, yeah, I just uh, give it time. Mm. Um, you know, you're moving into a different space. Like as a player, you're only thinking about yourself. Mm. Now you are part of an organization. Mm. You must think about everyone within the organization, mm. you know, stuff like that. So it kind of prepared me well uh, mm. for that. And by at that time, I mean, I played over 10 years professionally and yeah. I was, you know, it was getting difficult mm -hmm. to wake up uh, also when you, you wake up you feel your body the pains it's and the pains air. from yesterday I was you know and you just like, to go do it again yeah um, uh, it was getting more and more difficult so when i made this decision and also i knew that hey, 
I wanted to play with my kids one day. I didn't want to be struggling with my bag mm. and mm. stuff like that. It made my decision quite easy to say, no, you know what? Let me just stop now, look after my body and so that I can live a normal mm. life. Yeah, because when it happened, it was quite scary. I was at a sh like a grocery store and I was just like picking up, uh, getting soup from the bottom and mm. my disc then it went. It's just oh. Yeah, just like that. And I, mm. I couldn't, sure, I just left everything. I walked to the car. I think it took me like 10 minutes to get into the car because you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't yeah. straighten up. Mm. So then get into the car, drive myself home, <laughs> and then like, just sit there and listen to the car. Okay, wow. what is happening? Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, whew, yeah, when that happens, it's very scary. Um, you don't know what to do. Yeah, and you don't have freedom of movement. Like, not having mm. freedom of movement mm. is mm. so scary. Like, like, in the streets, and now you can't. Yeah. Even like, you can't even grocery shop. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't even go. Yeah, you know, like that, that really, that, 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 that scare. Uh, but I think that it, it was just like, no, if meaning uh, I carry on with cricket, it's going to be um, like challenging this, um, I'm done. Now, sports science, what do you do every day now? What is it that you do as sports science? Okay. Uh, science? So, well, sports science, it's it's almost like uh, project management. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, like now, like I, have, I when preparing guys for a season or for yeah for competitions, um, I start um, plotting out. Okay, this is when we need to start training. Uh, well, what type of training are we gonna do in the the different blocks? Mm -hmm. What goals do I have for those different blocks? When do you start doing skills work? Um, what are the goals? But the goals are more coaches will define that a little bit more. But um, in terms of also the amount of workload needed, um, I need to calculate, okay, how much work must be done um, within a certain time frame to make sure that by the time you're playing your first game, you start your peaking at the so right time. We're talking fitness. Yeah. Uh, just fitness. Yeah. Uh, fitness, yeah. But fitness is a very broad term. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> What, what is this thing? What are you doing? Yeah, that's so why I uh, always start with um, even just testing. Uh, we they do medicals yeah. uh, to say, okay, medicals, uh, how's your heart? How's your body? Um, is everything okay? Is there any injuries? Um, that's where Cizwe would come in. Um, he checks the. Shout uh, out to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to Cizwe. He checks um, whether it's the body functioning as it should. Is there like, a, like niggles or issues? Um, that we need to highlight or kind of uh, make sure that we address in uh, in the whatever period we have um, time frame. So he looks at that and then also then I'll look at history, uh, the history, um, and then even chat to them, what are your goals? Uh, what are your shortcomings last season? What do you want to improve? And then, then that's what that gives me an idea, okay, how are we going to do your strength program, your power program? and so on. And all guys are at different yeah, uh, so. levels. Yeah. Then you just kind of plot out, okay, you need to start training here. These are your goals. I'm going to test you again at this time. Then we assess where we are, whatever we put as, as interventions. Is it working? Is it not? Uh, what do we need to change? And then we move on. Yeah. yeah. So um, you focused only on cricket right now, or are you doing as well anything? Well, I can analyze any sport, uh, mm. but uh, mainly I specialize in cricket. Sure. Yeah, but uh, in terms of, um, I mean, being a, a sports scientist, I can analyze any any movements in any sport. Um, then, and, uh, then I can underline, but okay, this is what you need to focus on. This is what you need to improve. I can also look at, uh, like, you just look at data. Okay, let's say, for instance, soccer. Um, let's say you're working with a winger, the best wingers are operating at these speeds. Uh, what are you currently operating at? Uh, what are your primary movements? What, how well are you doing them? Where do we need to improve on them? And then we actually get, uh, get it done. And we, that's why I say we plot out to say, okay, this is our starting okay. point. It's a plan at end point where I need you to be. And then intervention that we have in between and we test to see okay are we reaching it are we not if we're not what's the issues oh. and it's either issues with um, either technique it could be uh, nutrition it could be mental 
it's a whole lot of other issues where you know your CISWIC comes in, your psychologists come in, your coaches come in, whether it's a discipline issue, it's a lifestyle issue, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So was like was sports science what you thought it was before you started actually studying it? No. <laughs> what did you think sports science was before you started? Yeah, when I started, I thought sports science, I thought it was um like more I thought, I thought you know you'd be more in the in the lab. Uh, mm-hmm. Like uh, mm-hmm. okay. uh, just like crunching numbers, uh, you know, looking at yeah, looking yeah, at movements, like yeah, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, uh, but I guess yeah, that is what sports science is. Uh, I'm just very fortunate that I'm able to transfer all that stuff onto the field. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm happy to have that opportunity because yeah, you do find that you have your scientists that are behind the scenes, they're crunching numbers mm-hmm. and stuff, but. Uh, I'm very fortunate I'm able to actually say, okay, with all these numbers, how do we make sure that these numbers uh, translate onto the field mm-hmm. and actually have impact um, onto the field? Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely not what I thought it was back mm-hmm. then. Uh, but, uh, yeah, now I'm seeing like it's so dynamic, mm-hmm. which I like the challenges. So <laughs> it's right up my <laughs> it's up my, my, my wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I do enjoy the changes every day. Oh. You have new studies uh, every month, oh. something new is coming up. What we thought was this 10 years ago. Oh. It's now, not like that at all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm enjoying that at the moment. Oh. Uh, and I've been coming you. What should they look for in terms of studying this? Like, who must be a person that wants to study sports science? But it's a, like another option. Yeah, it's definitely another option. But mm-hmm. I'd say the. It's it's another option because if you if you like a particular sport, especially if you've played the sport, it makes it easier for you to understand oh. and kind of like make connections between the science and the actual execution oh. of uh, the game. Because every game is a culture. It has oh. um, uh, what can rules, I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. rules. Um, yeah. You know, uh, certain movements that yes, we can see, but if you understand the feeling. Mm. of how the movements you know which are, muscles are being used. Uh, yeah, you know, it makes it easier for you to make the connections uh, to the science and what mm. you read. Mm. So I'd say, yeah, if you've got, if you, you, you're you very interested in a certain particular sport and uh, you want to delve more into it, then, yeah, then definitely you should uh, go, you know, that's the person I'd, I'd employ. So, yeah, no, go into sports science. But also it must be a person that... Um, you like uh you must you must have a, a heart of serving because um it's not like as you said like if you're part you wanted to be like a top superstar. athlete a superstar uh in sports science you're not going to be a superstar mm-hmm. that's uh you're behind the scenes you know backroom stuff yeah you, uh, you're not in the forefront uh you, you know no matter how you help a, guy, a person to get from here to point B, when they get their success, it's still it's their success. Um, you know, yes, you, you know, success. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it's nice that you're like, oh, just, you know, I'm glad you were able to help the individual get to this place, uh, and you know, you feel good about it. Yeah. Okay, this is good, but um, it's not gonna be your glory. Like you're not gonna be in lights, uh, and you must just understand that, and not because when that happens and you don't get, like, you shouldn't be doing it to get a thank you every time because it's your job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If so uh, you help, credit. exactly. Yeah. If you help a person to get where they need to be, that's what you're actually yeah. employed to do. That's you know, you have to they, they don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, they don't have to say, hey, I don't know, hey, Tunes, thanks, you've really oh. done oh. this. And 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 I think, uh, I find that if you played the sport, and uh, because as a player, you always get that oh. reaffirm, uh, reaffirmation, and you get people patting, yeah, well done. Yeah, you scored two goals. You're the man, man of the match. So you get used to that. Mm. So when you make that transition to uh, backroom stuff, you that all falls away. You must just uh, put that away. And I know sometimes you might even guys sulk because mm. you're like, ah, I didn't get that recognition. Mm. But yeah, you must just understand. Yeah, that's not your your role anymore. Yeah. yeah, your role is to help these guys, and it's your job. You're getting paid for it, <laughs> so. Mm. You know, just you know, be happy. Okay. So, have you? Did you ever feel a sense of validation 
like mm. self-validation for still being able to elevate despite the fact that you have a back injury. Like you still mm. were able to go into the field that you love. You're still able to make other players better than they were before they met you. Mm. Do you ever like give yourself that self-validation to say, wow, I'm actually still doing my thing? Yeah, no, um, but definitely. Like um, I still, uh, I, I definitely, uh, like I try and uh, especially like getting that validation or oh. is that I, I try and train as hard as the players do. Like mm. all the mm. programs mm. I'll give out, I really want um, like giving out something I haven't tried before. Um, so all the stuff I do try and error by myself uh, mm. and see, okay, to understand uh, those movements, the type of training. Uh, when I say like the sticking points is like with the difficulty uh, or the difficult points you get with executing certain movements in the gym or this, like I'd like to feel them first and then uh, I'm able to teach the other person um, how to do it. So like in terms of validation, once I know like I, when I gym and I train and I get to a certain point, like, oh, just, you know, feel like you're yeah, not too far off from my athletes. Oh, oh, oh. Um, then I know that, oh, again, I can teach them the movements. And the thing is when I show, when you show them and uh, they learn quicker, they, they don't, yeah. uh, that's how yeah. athletes are. They yeah. learn quicker from seeing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, they're very visual, yeah. yeah. So when you can do the stuff and when they see it, they learn quicker. And that's, I'd say, the validation way. Um, I'm able to um, get uh, or uh, teach somebody something mm. uh, a lot quicker because I can show them. That's how I get that validation. So, okay. yeah, no. so what's next for you now in your future? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, now um, I'm, I'm working with um, most of the high performance teams in the, in the country. So um, I'm looking for like a, forward to creating or oh, help, yeah, help creating uh, better athletes, uh, especially um, uh, for, for the pro tiers. Sure. You know, yeah. So right now it's just studying the players a lot younger to understand uh, what they need uh, for international cricket, what they need to succeed. Um, you know, the mentality, thought processes, um, so stuff like that. Um, I make sure that I now, uh, I want to push those youngsters as much as possible before they get to the international stage. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very fortunate I'm working with them now. Um, like, as I said, the academy again mm -hmm. um, that I attended now, I'm, uh, I'm the SNC at that academy now mm -hmm. and teaching those guys with the knowledge of playing and also attending mm -hmm. and knowing science yeah. and stuff. Um, it really helps me to prepare and shape those young minds now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my next step. Actually, it's like shaping these young minds now to make sure that we win World Cups. That's that's for me, my mm. next business is we need to win World Cups. Yeah. So would you say your favorite part about being an SNC is mm. seeing your, your players improve? Yeah, no, hands down. Yeah, that, that that's what gives me that gratification. That boost yeah. of confidence to say, I can yeah. actually do this. Yeah, 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 seeing guys, they come in like, oh, this is my goal. And then two months down the line, you see that just they're achieving these goals. You're like, oh, okay, it's, Unbelievable. There's no better feeling than that. Mm. So where can people get a hold of you? Uh, you can if you them. want to be get out there, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if they want advice, you know. Um, yeah. phew, I'd say probably, okay, at the moment, yeah, I'd say maybe Instagram yeah. uh, handle. Yeah, um, I'm Tumi Masekela on Instagram. Uh, or even uh, on my LinkedIn profile. Um, they can find me there, Tumi Masekela. Um, yeah, no, Facebook, I have a Facebook account, I haven't used it in years, <laughs> but yeah. All right, on bottom top, we've got the each one teach one, so uh, we need you to teach us something else. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, probably maybe management. Nothing wrong. Um, I've got, uh, okay, uh, should I say his name? We're looking forward to calling him or her. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Thank you. <for> <laughs> uh, no, it's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, Thank there you. you have it. With our current sports scientist, Tumi Masikela, and Tapo from there, over there. <laughs> 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 and this is your episode of Barum Cop with your host, Uncle Scott. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See Thank you later. You.
Bar, 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 bar.